The sea covers over two-thirds of the planet's surface. Yet we know more about space and the universe than we do about our own oceans. Between the states of Connecticut and New York is the Long Island Sound. A naturally protected channel into New York City used for over hundreds of years. The Sound's rich maritime history has played a significant role in the growth of our country. Join us as we explore its unsung residents and its forgotten history. Hello everybody, Captain Dennis here with Squall Marine Divers. Today we're going on a little recovery job. We're going to recover some oyster cages. We got a phone call that somebody had lost some big giant oyster cages. I guess it was in a high traffic area during the fireworks and stuff in July. And uh, they got cut loose. And these are big giant, giant like four feet by four feet squared, give or take. Pretty big, big giant cages. And what they do is they seed oysters. And you get them started and then they put them in these cages to let them get bigger and then when they're all big they they break them basically bring them in that's that's my understanding but i'm no oysterologist so we're gonna go down here and do some looking we've already scanned with uh our uh, structure scan so we we know we're in the vicinity there's a whole bunch of them out here but today we're only looking for two so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna run our line out there's a line can't see it we didn't film it but you get the gist. So we're going to go out in about uh, 100 feet and then start making some turns. And we're going to let the uh, line on the reel do the work. Basically, whatever we get tangled up on, we'll find out on our rolling back in. So here you can see the reel. And here you can see what we got caught up on. And this is one of the big, big cages. These are pretty heavy duty. And you can see the line is kind of just blowing in the breeze. I guess there's all kinds of oysters inside. So I just put the camera down and go around the other side. And the first thing we're gonna do is we had to go back to the boat, get our first buoy. And then we, this is not super deep here, folks. So we're just going to tie the buoy that they, they gave us to the broken line, or the cut line. You can see there's a little bit of current, but nothing horrible. And don't be like me. If you're ever going to do a job, even if it's shallow water and it's nice viz and all that good stuff, wear gloves. Please wear gloves because there's a lot of shells in and they cut easily. So just that's food for thought. That's my little pro tip for the day. So we're going to tie this off, make sure it's secure, and it's secure. So now we're going to run the reel out again and see what we get tangled up on. Go out a little bit more. And we got something. Now here we are, we got caught into a block which was used to basically lay out the grid for where we were searching it's one of the uh, oyster fields and here we have a uh, a lobster trap that's derelict so if he was looking for that he was spot on he dropped it right on top of it but these are ghost traps basically they're just kind of loose out here floating around and uh, they're designed to certain areas are designed to rot away so that they don't continue to kill lobsters or other marine life here we have another block that is loose. So I'm gonna just pull in the line so it doesn't get fetched up in anybody's props coming through here or anybody's fishing gear. So 
So we're just gonna get rid of that rope. Ah, uh, I'll leave the I'll leave the cinder block here. So here we are, just gonna crank in the reel because we got stuck on something else. And I pretty much use this reel all the time I'm diving in low vis. It's always good to have a reel. I wouldn't recommend diving in low vis without a reel. That's just crazy talk. And we found our second cage. So while I tie up stuff on the top, I'm going to give us a quick look-see. I saw some fishies. And I'm going to sneak over the top and see if we can see any of them. Now we've got some clam chum. We're going to put that out and do what I like to call leave the camera behind. They don't like the big bald-headed guy making all kinds of noise. So we're going to leave the camera here and see what we can see. So I'm up top and I'm going to be uh, working on putting the buoy back on like we did the last one. And we'll see who pops up. You can already see there's some guys on the left-hand side that are hanging out underneath the cage. And now we wait. Oh, there it is. It's the dinner bell's been rung. Porgies come in. A whole bunch of them come in. I'm just going to readjust. And let's see what they do. Hmm. Here they come. Like piranhas. I think that's a baby sea bass on the left. And there's a bunch of rabid porgies. Very aggressive, very dangerous. Chew your food. I guess the secret's out. This is the free food of the day. That's being a camera hog. And his buddies show up. I don't know what that guy on the left's doing. There's me, way on the other side, sneaking in. Trying to give him a wide berth. And then everybody goes crazy. Food fight. Now the spider crab's got to come in and just break up the whole thing. and ruin up. It's all a mess. When spider crab shows up, party's over. Well, that's pretty much it for this dive. We're going to head back up to the boat, tie off the second buoy, and uh, let the guy know that we're all set. He can come and haul these cages. So we hope you enjoyed today's dive. We look forward to diving with you again. This is our 118th dive. So be sure to check out the rest of them at squallsmarine.com. And until next time, I'm Captain Dennis.